shall we sort of um, just start? Shall yeah, we just? Maybe she knows yeah, she knows. So, okay. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for coming. So uh, nicely in time. Uh, my name is Case Bicart. I am working here as a staff member at the institute, and I was asked to facilitate this fishbowl. And I am going to walk around a little bit because we have a circle, as you say, as you see here. Um, and we are going to do a fish open fishbowl discussion. And I will explain briefly. Well, Cassie thinks, what is this guy walking around? Getting dizzy. Getting dizzy. So we hope also that people will sit everywhere because here in the center is where it happens. So the shape of the fishbowl basically are concentric circles. Uh, and in the middle, uh, you would say, are the, uh, the people that speak. This is a way of trying to get a discussion with lots of people um, without people speaking too long and with people being able to intervene if they want to. Now, what is the principle? There are four chairs in the middle, and the four chairs are occupied uh, now by two people. There's two empty chairs. Georgina is coming in the third chair, and there's always one of the four chairs empty. So that's, that's sort of the interesting dynamic of the fishbowl. There's one chair empty. So here's the conversation starting, and we'll get... Uh, I'll, I'll just introduce the, the, the starters of the fishbowl in a minute. But the important principle of the fishbowl is that if someone thinks uh, he or she would like to intervene in the discussion or contribute or ask a question, there is an empty chair. So you take the chair and then one of the three has to get up to make room uh, in order to, to make sure there's another empty chair. So. One big rule, there's always one empty chair uh, and any of you is allowed to get in. There's no hierarchy here, okay? So that's why we have four corridors. Actually, we have more. One, two, three, four. And there's a little one. This one is stopping. We have four corridors. So if you're close to the corridor, you can run up or run up or just walk up here uh, and sit here. Now, what is important? Um, uh, in this uh, mechanism, and you'll see how it works, that um, other than with a panel, where you sit behind a table and talk and talk, and people wait and want to say something, here you can already think, I want to say something, I want to say something. You, so you're prepared, so you're prepared whilst you're walking up uh, to, to the center of the fishbowl, uh, and you contribute, and you're allowed to leave again. One important thing, don't sit too long here. Yeah. So my role, as a facilitator, is to make sure, one, that if people sit here too long, I take measures. <laughs> yeah? And secondly, I have to make sure there's always one empty chair. Because you, as participants of the fishbowl, are also responsible that the discussion is going. Okay, so that's the method. What is the topic? The topic for today is the future research agenda. Uh, on the topics that we are discussing. And we are getting uh, a brief introduction by Professor Kuruda um, on, let's say, some uh, pointers. And uh, he asked to use PowerPoint when I said, PowerPoint in the fishbowl? <laughs> That's not possible, because there's always someone sort of with the back to the... But anyway, we'll do that. We'll do that. We'll just experiment with that. And then we have two... Um, first commentators, uh, Georgina and Kathy, who are going to uh, respond uh, and get the discussion going. So the, soon, the sooner you think, I want to intervene, I have something to say, take the empty chair. Okay, um, so I have only passed some uh, privilege to talk longer than 10 minutes. And so, I assume we have um, living in a, a, a town, very small town, and the uh, Georgina is a bakery, and the Catherine is running a liquor shop, and but uh, suddenly formal currency stopped to work. Euro doesn't work, 
So, but you have a lot of bread, and you have a lot of stock of wine. We have will to sell and purchase, but the only problem is currency did not exist. Then Georgina began to issue his Georgina note. So purchase uh, is very clear. You can purchase any bread has note. And Catherine follows. They, she, she also issued the Catherine note. It's available any w kind of wine. And the, uh, the iron butcher, I follow. Any kind of meat can purchase by my crude as note. But the people now began to mix a butcher, note for crude It's a useful to the, the bakery for Georgina. So uh, a note issued by show can be available or commodity in this time. Is there any problem? No problem. But this is not the assumption. Um, I'm sorry. Oh, oh, oh yes. And this has happened this 1929, a town in China. Uh, this town, just a 300 household, but a 300 household, but 36 shop issue independently its own note, a grocery, grain dealer, etc. A lot of all kind of these shops issue their own notes, uh, but people mix and people. They continue to exchange the trade, no problem at all. And what is this is not isolated case. Nobody can not count, but perhaps more than ten thousand regions in China in this period do the same. Oh, so no, this has no legal bug, no intrinsic value at all. But in spite of that, no people could make. Exchange. Oh, no interest value, no legal bug. But currency can work. And in this case, no bank exists, but even society who has already depended on bank, but if bank is going to fail, crawl, what happened? In the, what happened? And this is in 19, uh, 1931, the, uh, the Great Depression, a town in the United States, Ten Nineo. There is uh, well, just one bank, but it's going to uh, it, it close the door, and not, not yet bankrupt. But the people, all people has the bank account, this, the Ten Nineo system bank, and but no currency running, so everything stopped. Then the Chamber of Commerce, they make a device. A, they issue a the total amount equivalent to a quarter of all deposit of this, this bank, they issue. But part of the, the, the issuance was this, this, this. Um, I'm sorry, sorry. Uh, yeah, quite this. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. So, so this is wooden tablet. So wooden tablet of 25 cent circulated for several years. Yeah, so that, but this is no legal bug, no guarantee. And this is a, this is the um, bank deposit that is assumed to be bugged, but actually bank appear to be is going to bankrupt. So no legal guarantee and no interest value. <laughs> but people just accept. Otherwise, they have to make trade just in barter. So there's no explicit legal the, um, guarantee. Um, oh, thank you. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, guarantee. And, and no the interest value. But people just accept. So they share very loose or implicit agreement. And this is not the isolated case at all. Uh, you can find many similar cases across the world and through the history. Yeah. Um, sorry. Yes, so this is the first message. <laughs> but the, this, the why they can accept, they should accept, because Currency is always in shortage. But why is currency is, is always in shortage? And sometimes 
the issue of this sort of local node has reason, printed reason, as uh, they, they, they say, uh, suddenly copper cast disappear and silver is too expensive to the mediate the lo local transaction. That is why uh, uh, we the issue this, the local nodes. It's already happened. The issue of the thing sold. This is under special case. That is why I emergently is issue this sort of device. But this is not true because we can find the same similar, similar case across the world, through the world. So this is not special at all. So why shortage of currency so ubiquitous? Why? The oh, reason is quite simple. Um, uh, but, but, uh, yeah. uh, this is quite scientific statistics. Um, for some of you come from UK. Now UK, one pound equivalent exchange to 100 pence, but it's not <coughs> before 1970, 1971. It was the under the one pound equal 240 pence from the, the fall of Roman Empire. Uh, but they, they changed the currency system. Then loyal men seriously worry about how many coinage is necessary. Because they have to change the entire coinage, but if they over-issue unnecessarily, it, it, it brings inflation and vice versa deflation. That's why they ask the Barclay, etc., the try to count the coinage and the, the date of issuance. And they incidentally found, this is the statistics, the by denomination, in average, Two out of 100 coin disappear annually. That means it's within 30 years, half of currency disappear. And another point is, <laughs> the, um, um, the difference of wastage rate is quite large. The smallest denomination, half the pence, the almost four coinage out of 100 disappear. Or out of track of the bank, bank circuit, while the higher denomination stayed in the circuit of banks, bank circulation. That suggests smaller denomination currency far faster disappear from the track of bank circuit. So currencies disappear. So that means the someone have to add every year. Otherwise, we cannot maintain the size of transaction. And, and this is case. Uh, the case. This case, uh, we, we can find the same result, almost the, the similar investigation, 1960s, the United States. And the United States and the UK, 1960s, know that the, the society most deeply dependent on banking system most of people have bank account. But in spite of that, two out of 100 coin fail to return bank. So you can easily assume, if you have no bank, perhaps far more coin fail to return to issuer. If you assume five out of 100 coin disappear, so just 20 years, half, more than half of kind coins, they almost the, the, the ceased to fall, stop, stop to work. So something must be done. And this is the, um, oh sorry, this is um, some improvement. Oh, this is a case of China. In, med in medieval periods, the it's, uh, excavation. This suggests, and left hand side is a relatively large number. The, the, the right hand side is a relatively small number. That suggests perhaps this large number is a result of intentional accumulation. While this side is relatively this, this small number, so perhaps this is not intentional hold, perhaps just a straight. And the interesting is both have 300 years coin. So particularly this size, smaller the, <coughs> the excavation suggests even the unintentional the, the, the group of 
coined the contain the 300 years issuance. So that suggests coin rarely returned to issue and the state to, to circulate. So anyway, and currency is always stagnant rather than current. So that means it's a currency easy to distribute but difficult to assemble on demand. That is why if something happens or a local have to make some device to create more currency, and that is why local currency always appears. And, but why? Why currency is necessary? Because we, have, we can have another solution that is, so for example, credit. Oh, I, I, I assume, we assume, we are now the, uh, living in the same, same town. That I said Georgina and Catherine issued the note. But another solution is, the Georgina and Catherine keep the account book and just the make transaction, just credit. In that case, you need no currencies. But the problem is, and there's two directions. A society has crossed the, the social relationship. Uh, this is the, 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 um, a village uh, that consists of six households, and this round is the market. And the, and the, uh, it, and the same size of transaction, but this society depends on mutual credit between the villagers, while this society depends on more uh, market. That means this pattern needs small denomination currencies because they, they need always the, the device for very good level of transaction, while this case depends on mutual trust. So you can advance your commercial activity both ways, but <coughs> it is <coughs> quite a different direction of service. And this way must be make society more anonymous while this way makes society very cohesive. So you have to choose this way or this way. And both appear to be local. This appear to be local, uh, depend on local currency, while this appear to be local credit. Both can be local market, but money has, has a variety. And that's why I always insist the quality of money is important than quantity of money. And if we see locality of money, we can arrange this way and the tan intangible ways. Uh, but the intangible ways it is only available, the useful among the well acquainted, best customer, because they depend on trust. And this means the, it has limited access. While if you issued currency, it's tangible, it makes the transaction anonymous and open usage. Everyone can access, but it must be fragmental supply and it's quite easy to stagnant. That is not the problem. So, anyway, you have to choose and the quality, quality of money depends on social relationship. This is a message of my presentation. So, anyway, don't be trapped by the dichotomy, money and society. The quality of money depends on social relationship. Oh, that is all. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yes, you can give a hand, absolutely. Um, thank you very much, Professor Kuroda. Um, I did not introduce you properly uh, as uh, you are an expert on financial history and linked to the Institute of Advanced Studies of Asia of the University of Tokyo. Sorry for that, but um, that is too complex. Thank you for your um, nicely uh, provocative points. Uh, we are, for those of you that came late and that are looking for a chair, on that side, it's still lots of space. Please come close also, because the closer you are to the center of the fishbowl, <laughs> the, the, the quicker you can pick up the empty chair. For those of you, we're doing uh, that are just coming in the fishbowl um, basically happens here in the center the discussion there's one empty chair uh, and after the introduction you can occupy it and then one of the three has to leave <laughs> who can I give who can I give a first sort of uh, 
reaction um, to discuss the issue of our research agenda. Okay. Please, Catherine. Yeah. Um, well, just from listening to Kuroda, I, was, I, I heard a few research agendas, it seemed to me, emerging from what you were saying. Um, and clearly, one of them is, is just the historical evidence that we have um, for other kinds of currencies. What, where have they occurred? What are the geography of those currencies? Um, what are the cultures in which they've occurred? And obviously, much of anthropology has been doing this kind of work. Um, but it seems like there's an urgency to know more about the past and how communities worked with the lack of or different kinds of currency. So that's one kind of research um, that's, I guess, a sense of a bit of a pure research agenda. But I guess um, taking up your last point, um, what is the relationship between different kinds of currencies systems or mutual credit systems mm. on uh, the relationship between those and social relationships and sociality? And it seems to me that there's a lot of interesting work that could be done and that needs to be done if we're trying to think about new futures mm. for the ways that currency systems or forms of exchange interact with things like forms of land ownership and land use and land degradation, um, production relations, accumulation patterns, um, so that any studies historically, I think, need to be extended beyond just the system of, of exchange, but to think of how is that, did that interact with the way that surplus was accumulated or land was degraded or sustained and so on. So it seems like there is uh, a need for a more sophisticated relationship between exchange systems and other aspects of our social and economic life that is a, another area for, for research. Especially because I think um, when we look at the development world, you know, there is this whole push um, to eliminate the unbanked, as they're called, you know, um, the whole push for electronic access to banking throughout the Pacific, for instance, been a big push for AusAid, one of the aid agencies in Australia. And there's an assumption that this kind of connection into various kinds of exchange and financial systems is part and parcel of becoming modern. So I think there's under, underlying what, what you're also pointing to is a critique perhaps of what modernity is mm -hmm. and how we might think about post-development worlds or post-modern worlds where we have very different kinds of, um, I, I guess, worlds interacting with each other where different kinds of exchange systems might work better than the kind of monoculture that many people have been talking about that has been so associated with a conception of modernity and progress. So the need for historical research that really talks to today um, and our need for thinking about new models for living is, it seems to me, something that you've opened up and um, is a really important agenda for people to step outside of their interest in the actual mechanisms of the exchange to their relationships with the kind of overdetermined world that they exist within. Do you not want uh, to, to follow up to that? You, you can later on react, of course. Yes? It's working. It's working. Yes, I was thinking of the same historical evidence. Where were the previous currencies? But I was also wondering the two cents that disappear every year. And I was looking at Shoot, who collects coins from all over the world. You must have the two cents of many countries in your pockets. The money, a lot of money has disappeared with you. And I was thinking, this is very common. We put coins in pockets or we collect them. Yes, money disappears. I never thought that uh, at such an aggregate level it would have this effect. So I would like to think what kind of system would allow us to trace where money goes. How could we track? how many times money turns around. And I think in a, comp in a complement, in a CCS, in a community currency system, this is something that we could think of. How many times does it go around? What transactions? How many transactions and for what amount? Uh, this is one thing that I would like to see happening. How do we study the circulation of money or the disappearance of money? The second question is, what makes the Georgina dollar worth anything. I mean, yes, I, you, I have a bakery, no, according to you. But why would anybody want my Georgina dollars to pay for Kathy's wine? And why would Kathy think that my Georgina dollars are worth anything? 
okay, you can always redeem it for bread, but you probably consume more than just bread and wine. Uh, how does it get into a system in which you can buy clothes, the, the manicure, and eventually electricity? And my last question is, how do we go from the circle to the prisma, back? Because you said, in the prisma, we have specific and personal social relations. And the market is the circle, the anonymity. Well, now we are in the circle. The, we, we are living the times of the circle in which everything is anonymous, and money has completely wiped off the consciousness or the awareness of the social relations behind every transaction. So how do we go back from circle to prisma? How do we go back from a world of anonymous <coughs> money into a world of personal or specific or interpersonal mm -hmm. transactions and money? Yeah, okay, so yes, I would like to respond the simultaneously the to the baker and the wine shop <laughs> and all that. Um, yes, and see, I have to stress, and the uh, I, my study always depends on historical facts, but I think the contemporary or history, it's common that the the usage of currency or dependency of currency closely related to degree of freedom freedom of the person can sell and s the purchase by own will if any person or oligarchy or any institute control monopolize the circulation of goods and it's in that case currency less necessary because currency especially tangible currency make us to have free opportunity to choose opponent in making transaction and oh <laughs> I miss you <coughs> and so but it, but I now we are the stage of after 1929. We get accustomed to the situation. Central bank, it's the control by state, issued affluent currency. That's why we mistake, oh, currency is always affluent, so they e exist. But actually, no, <laughs> because as I said, repeat, they appear to be affluent, but easy to, to distribute, but actually difficult to the assemble on the bond, even now. <laughs> uh, but the problem, but any, any, anyway, they, they now this the nature of currency, which always stagnant, but concealed by the phenomena, the, the central banking system now. And the, uh, um, the Georgina, the question, yeah, yeah, question, yes, and um, yes, um, now we appear to live in just uh, this the, the anonymous the round <laughs> world, but of course the village become now less important. But I think our society always mixture of anonymous relationship and some named relationship. But the named relationship always change form before most of people they, they live with the village society or community-based town. But for the case of Japanese, we are now living in another 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 form of the village. It we call company, but actually company is Japanese village. We have to always they take care of the neighboring the activity. So the village changes their form, but it always exists. Now you, I have another question then, and I was thinking, what makes, what makes <laughs> us look again at faces? Because I was wondering, uh, in the crisis in Argentina, the crisis was so serious that we perhaps went from the circle to the prisma we started seeing each other's faces again, and that's why we developed a kind of money that was useful for interpersonal relations. 
And then I ask, what are the factors that allow us to see the people behind the transaction again? Because that is perhaps a factor that makes us want to have a money that would express the faces with which we exchange. <coughs> Could it be that in Spain, with the crisis, people are seeing each other's faces again? Who is producing the bread and the wine? And I wonder, perhaps this is something we need to ex uh, explore behind CCS. What makes people want to have their own money? Is it perhaps the crisis a trigger for this?